This is day 23 of my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the exams, each day from Monday to Saturday, I'm posting a new video with a six mark question so that you can practice how to answer these extended response questions. You can find a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also access all of the videos via the playlist. Today's question comes from Unit 9 of AQA GCC Chemistry, which is the fourth topic in Chemistry Paper 2. Now, before you dive in and write an answer to the six mark question, a couple of quick reminders for you. This isn't an essay question, even though it looks like one. So although you do need to present your ideas in a logical order, there's no credit at all for writing in full sentences. And you're actually probably better off using bullet points, a numbered list or a table. I'd also suggest that you make a little bit of a plan before you start. I would always say it's a good idea at the start of the exam to find the six mark question and jot down a few ideas as you're answering the rest of the paper so that when it's time for you to answer this six mark question, you're not just staring at a blank sheet of paper, but you have a structure in your head. Now, if you haven't done so already, pause the video and give yourself six minutes to answer this six mark question. Whenever a question comes up on the exam which asks you about changes to the Earth's atmosphere, the number one mistake that lots of students make is that they don't identify the time period that they're being asked about. So in this question, we're asked about changes between the Earth's early atmosphere and the atmosphere today. So you shouldn't be talking about changes that are the result of the Industrial Revolution in the last 200 years or so. We don't want to be hearing about combustion engines and cars and factories. That's a different question. The other thing that you need to make sure you're doing is talking about a few different gases. So the major ones are going to be oxygen, carbon dioxide and nitrogen. You might also have included some information in your answer about water vapour and ammonia and methane, but these are less important because there's less information that you're supposed to know about them. Now, I would suggest that you lay your answer out in the form of a table, but if you've used bullet points, that's absolutely fine as well. So for each one of these three major gases, we want to describe what has happened to the proportion of it in the atmosphere and also why that is the case. So oxygen and nitrogen have both increased in the Earth's atmosphere and carbon dioxide has dramatically decreased. Then we can start to think about why this is the case. So you should know that about 2.7 billion years ago, the first photosynthetic algae evolved and they started to do photosynthesis. And of course, in addition to making glucose, photosynthesis produces oxygen, which is then released by those algae and also by green plants when they finally evolved. So that means that the proportion of oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere increased. Now, of course, linked to that is what's happened to carbon dioxide because the carbon dioxide levels have fallen dramatically because that carbon dioxide is being absorbed by plants to use to produce glucose. Now, you do want to explicitly make the link that that is happening because of photosynthesis. And I guess this is the one downside of having laid this out as a table. It would be really easy for me to just write in my carbon dioxide column that um, the carbon dioxide levels fell and not explicitly say it's because the plants are doing photosynthesis. So just make sure that you've done something, whether it's drawing an arrow or even just writing photosynthesis again to make that really explicit. Also, I've included in here to make glucose because I'm used to answering questions about the carbon cycle and I know that there's often credit for this, but actually you could probably get away without having included that and still get the credit here. Now, of course, it's not just these green plants and algae that are reducing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It also goes into a couple of other places. So the first place that carbon dioxide goes apart from green plants and algae is that it dissolves in oceans. And this is where you may have chosen to also talk about water vapour. Initially, there weren't any oceans on the Earth because it was far, far too hot. But as volcanic activity subsided and the Earth's temperature cooled down, then that water vapour was able to condense and therefore these oceans formed. And so the carbon dioxide could dissolve in there. Now, as the carbon dioxide dissolved in the oceans, it formed carbonates and those carbonate sediments um, are what make up sedimentary rocks like limestone. And also you might have talked about um, sea creatures using them to make their shells, which is, of course, where the limestone and chalk and things comes from. Also, 
carbon compounds are not just locked up in the shells of animals, it's also in their bodies and of course in the bodies of plants. So when those animals and plants die, we get that ancient biomass, which under a lot of pressure over a very long time, eventually turns into fossil fuels, or you might have named them as methane and crude oil and coal. Then finally, we have our nitrogen to talk about, and there are a couple of different things that have increased the amount of nitrogen in the atmosphere. The big one that you should know about is that volcanoes have released nitrogen. So all that volcanic activity increased the amount of nitrogen. And then the other bits of the nitrogen cycle are not included explicitly in the GCSE specification. So you aren't really supposed to know a lot of the detail, although you may have a teacher that chose to teach it to you anyway, because it's interesting and you do get credit if you have included it. So you might also have talked about ammonia being converted firstly to nitrites and then to nitrates and eventually to nitrogen and some nitrifying bacteria involved there. Or you might have talked about denitrifying bacteria, which are the ones that convert the soil nitrates into nitrogen gas. As is often the case with these six mark extended response questions, particularly if they're common between the foundation tier and the higher tier, you don't need to have said everything that is on this slide in order to get six marks. Some of it is beyond the scope of the question and some of it is useful, interesting information which isn't explicitly in the AQA specification. So although you do get credit for it, you don't have to have included it. So one thing is we probably don't need to actually put a timestamp on when algae evolved, even though that is in the specification, because it doesn't ask us about when within those 4.6 billion years these different changes happened. We also probably don't need to explicitly say that the carbon dioxide could only dissolve after the oceans have formed, although you could get a separate question about that elsewhere. And all of the extra nitrogen cycle stuff about the nitrifying and denitrifying bacteria, as much as it is true and interesting and you would get credit for it, you don't need to have included it. So what do you need to have included? Well, in order to get level three, which is your five or six marks, you're going to need to have talked about all three gases. And you're going to need to have said whether they've increased or decreased, which hopefully you would have included within your answer, even if you hadn't drawn it as a table. And we need a reason why. So for each one of these, you need to have picked one of the reasons from the column. Now, for these extended response questions for level three, they're always asking for strong links. But here I would say that you don't necessarily need lots of extra detail within one explanation, although I would include that. So if you'd said um, that plants absorb carbon dioxide to make glucose, I would call that a strong link. But actually, I think you can just link between the change in the proportion and the reason why. So if you talked about oxygen having increased as a result of plants releasing oxygen from photosynthesis, I would consider that to be a strong link. So you're going to need a couple of those strong links in order to get your six marks, and you're going to need to have talked about all three gases. Tomorrow's question is taken from the elasticity part of the forces topic of AQA GCC Physics Paper 2. Now, this is a combined science topic, but if you're watching this video in 2022, this is one of the topics that has been ruled out of the combined science exams. So if you're taking the 8464 or 8465 specifications, you don't need to be able to answer this question. Don't forget, you can get a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also the playlist with all the rest of the videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again tomorrow for day 24 of the Six Mark Challenge. If you found this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC Science revision videos coming soon.